So let's uh, show you where to go to get this info for today. Right, so let's have a little look at my share trade. I'm just going to show you, I'm going to put it on there now, live look. So we're going to use this little worksheet today. So if you're working via the app, it's much better that you're actually attending the meeting via Office 365. So go in via your email and then click the nine little dots in the top of your email and then go through Teams that way instead of using the Teams app because then you'll be able to get onto the team to actually find the document. So if you're working at school, you can use this um, worksheet, type into it, and then we can save it somewhere. Eventually, we can print it off. And we're going to glue it in your book because I've made a nice little worksheet for today's lesson. So what we're going to do, if I just um, show you where it's going on the team, if you go to year 19, and you'll, this is going to blow your mind now, we've now done, this will be lesson 40, which is just totally mad. So if we find the year 19, look, I'm just going to show you exactly where to find it in files here, class materials. I'm just making this lesson 40 now, right? Um, and it's called mining. So find that lesson 40 folder now for me where it says mining. All I'm going to do, you can see I'm doing it live. I'm just dropping a Word version of the worksheet in. And I'm also dropping a PDF version in. Better if you can do it on the Word version, but you can actually annotate over a PDF. So if you want to do that, you can do as long as you can eventually print it and you have it for your book. And then obviously I'll put the PowerPoint in there too that I'm using today. So that's also in there now. So find that mining worksheet. It's on lesson 40, mining. And I'm going to show you. Once I get a lot of worksheets, I'm going to cut them. Move these around for a minute. Just going to move them to another folder, keep it all nice and nice and neat. Put it in there, less than 40 mining. Those worksheets we know that'd be amazing. You're going to enjoy this lesson because. Well, it's basically fascinating how mining works. Skip that step, it will let me open. It's already got it open. Right, so mining, let's get it open. So, key question for you in a second how does mining activity modify the landscape? So, find the worksheet first. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Um, no, I'm going to stop, recording. stop sharing screen. You just get those worksheets for a second, okay? Right. Closing a few windows down. Got lots of things open. Right, guys, so I'm going to share my screen again. So we've probably got that worksheet. Now, what I want to show you is really cool because this has just happened. I said if you've been following the news, just this week, right, 20, 20th of January, a load of miners in China got trapped 600 metres deep in a gold mine, all right? So nearly, you know, getting towards a kilometre deep, ridiculous. And they actually thought they were all going to die in there. There was 22 of them trapped in the Hushan gold mine on the outskirts of Yanti. OK, and basically there was a rock fall that trapped them. They actually managed to drill down quicker than they thought with this big auger machine and actually get an access tunnel and bring them out. Um, they were actually able to like, pass them food and things like that through this, the access tunnel and, and liquid until they've actually got the hole big enough to get them out. And they drilled day and night until they got to them and rescued them. Um, when they came out, they had like blankets and everything over their eyes to stop the sunlight damaging their eyes. So I think that's fascinating what miners take these big risks. And I just thought it's relevant to what we're doing. Just keep following the news. Geology is always in the news. So we've got to start with mining today. 
And mining is really interesting topic because everything that we own comes from a mine. Okay, so you see, I've nicked the old Minecraft um, text there. You can learn quite a bit from Minecraft. I've been told it's the most popular game in the whole world. Didn't know that until recently. So mining, this is one of the biggest copper mines in the world. And we want to think about how does mining activity modify the landscape? And then how can we restore something as ugly as that? So that's today's key question for your book, guys. And I'm going to give you some key vocab today. So we're looking for these words, right? Spoil heap, that's the kind of polite word. Miners call that slag heap, okay? Got spoil heap. We're going to look at pillar and stall mining. Subsidence means sinking of the ground as a result of mining, open cast mining, and landscaping. So, can you get the key question and the keywords for your book? Underline your title, underline the keywords. So, how does mining activity modify the landscape, and how can it be? restored okay so how does mining modify the landscape how can it be restored and we're using those key words spoil heap pillar and stall subsidence and open cast and landscaping okay so you can see when they're going to dig out all of this overburden rock that's covering the deposits that they're getting to when they're trying to get copper they create a lot of spoil. And this is an example of what we call an open cast mine because it's totally open. You couldn't get stuck in there like you could in that one I just showed you. Some of the deep mines, though, are called pillar and stall mines. So that gold mine where the Chinese got trapped is a pillar and stall mine. And landscaping is what you have to do to the area once mining stops. Subsidence just means that the ground can sink as a result of mining. You can create holes in the deeper ground and things can drop into it. So we're going to start by looking at the worksheet. We're doing most things on the worksheet today. So have this handy because you're going to describe what's happening in that photograph. And I want you to develop four questions that you want to ask. OK, so once you've got your title, get the worksheet, have a look at the photo. Describe what's happening in the photograph. And then I want four questions that you want to ask. Once you've got your four questions, I want you to throw your best question into the chat. So everyone's going to have a go at that. So four questions that you want to ask about this photo. And then once you've developed your four questions, just type your best question into the chat. That's the title for the lesson, guys. We can move on from that now. So this is the photograph. I want you to ask, basically, what is happening here? Four questions. So I want you to think of the questions that you want to ask. OK. So describe what's happening. So what's happened here? Four questions that you want to ask. Now, if you can't get the worksheet, you can still do it in your book. But really try and do it on the worksheet in the folder 40. Get yourself four questions that you'd like to ask me. I'll see if I can answer them. Two minutes, guys. Four questions, please, that you'd like to ask me about this and describe what you can see. What can you see happening? Just give me some adjectives. Describe what's going on here. OK, so describe what's happening and then four questions you would like to ask me. And then give me your best question in the chat, please. So hopefully the chat get it coming alive now. Uh, no one's got their questions in there yet. 
So what's going in that photograph? What do you want to ask me? Go for it. Think of your four best questions. Ask me your best one. Really famous photograph, this. Really, really, really famous, actually. So we'll describe what's going on and what questions would you like to ask me about it? So I know a lot about this. Really, really important to me, this disaster. Give me your best question, guys. Come on, see if you can beat me. See if you can get a question that I can't answer. Okay, so if you describe what's going on. Chat open then. Sir? Yeah? This isn't my question, but did right. it happen near us? No. No. Not really. Getting some good questions coming in now, guys. Yeah, I like that one, Sam. Was there a hurricane? Great idea, that. I like that. Why did it happen? Where is it like that, Rose? Don't worry, Josh. I know you've had a problem getting in this morning. All we're doing, we're, we're, I'm in lesson 40 on the team, Josh, you can find a folder that says mining. We're just working out what's happened here and what questions you'd like to ask. That's all we're doing. I've recorded the lesson as well. And then the worksheet in lesson 40 looks like that. So go on to the team, class resources, lesson 40. We're just describing what's happened in this photo and then you're doing four questions you'd like to ask about it. And then in the chat, you're giving me your best question. Where's all the material come from, Angelica? I like that. Um, Israel, what have you got here? Is it a repair or did something happen to the building? Yeah, good question. That. It could be just repairing it. Um, why is the dirt only on the right? Yeah, good, great question. That is. Yeah, why is it only on the right? Good observational skills. What did happen to Emily? Yeah, good. Come on, guys. There must be other people now. Give me some more info. Will you put the picture back on? Sir? Yeah, yeah. It's also on the worksheet as well. So you've got the worksheets on there, but that's the picture. Worksheets in folder 40 on the team and the mining. Maybe just think about what kind of building that might be, when this occurred, where it might be. Look at what the men are wearing. Well, they certainly all look like men. What are they actually wearing, a lot of these guys? That might be a giveaway. <coughs> and actually, look in the background, behind my video symbol, that tells you something about what's going on as well. So I'm going to move that video symbol, shrink it down a bit. Put it here where it's not as important because actually you see better without that on. Okay, so we've got some good questions coming through, guys. I'm really enjoying them. So let's have a little look at those in a second. This is such a famous thing, this. I know it. Right, okay, where there explosions traveling to a mine, yeah. Uh, where's the file for the work, Israel? It's on folder 40. So if you go to the team, to show you my screen, teams, year nine geology, files, class materials, Israel, and then find folder 40 there, mining, PowerPoint's there, the worksheet's there, it's PDF and Word version, so you can just write into the Word document version of it, and that's got the photograph to help you look. When you open it. Is that all right? I have the question. Put it in the chat if it does. And I know you're sorted. All right, got some good answers coming through here now. Thanks, Israel. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to answer some of these then. All of these questions, I think I'm going to answer. I'm going to start with yours first, Rose. This is, and also answer yours, Sam, about it being a hurricane or not. 
This is in Wales, in South Wales, a place called Aberfan. It's the Aberfan mining disaster. OK, now in terms of Aberfan mining disaster, 144 people died instantly in this. And you think, well, hang on a minute, how can it be a mining disaster? This is at the surface. Well, this building, and Pierce asked it, is the building getting repaired or not? No, it's not getting repaired. It's getting shored up to stop it collapsing while they dig the bodies out. They're actually looking for bodies of people here. Um, this was live as they were doing it. And the men that are doing it are actually, a lot of them are miners. So some of the people here, like local people, but some of these guys with tin hats on are actually miners. Because it's a mining area. Now, what they were doing in this area, they're mining for coal in Wales. And they piled all the coal up onto these big spoil heap ticks. They look like big volcanoes, but they're not. They're just all the waste from the mine. And they built the waste tips far too close to the, this building. And this building is the primary school. It's the Ponty Glass Primary School. And what happened, all the children were in this hall with all the teachers. It was only a primary school. They're having the, the morning assembly. It happened in the morning after a period of heavy rain. And one of these tips, tip number seven, slipped. They numbered all the tips. And this is, the, this is tip number seven. It's all the coal spoil, which caused the landslip and slipped through this building. And what it did, it just basically smashed through the wall and buried all the children. So most of the children in the village died, 112 of them. And a few adults, 28 adults. Now to this day, there's been a lady, dinner lady, who shielded two of the children, brought the children close to her as the tip started to come through the window. She knew something bad was happening. She shielded the children from it. The children survived, but she died. And they've just actually worked out who it was who saved them. And they're so, so, so thankful. This all happened in 1966. This is a spoil tip collapse. Really, really famous. OK, so we're going to watch this little video clip to explain it a bit more. I'm just going to make sure that when I'm projecting my screen, I've actually projected it with the audio. So we're going to find yeah, we've got audio now, I think. So you should be able to in a second. See this YouTube clip. Oh, this morning. So this is the other fan tragedy. A generation perished in Abavan. In a few minutes, nearly 200 children happy because they would begin a holiday that afternoon, were engulfed. And for them, there was no holiday, no half term. It was to be their final term. On the site of the landslide, the task of rescue operated with speed. It looked impossible, it looked hopeless. But these men are miners. Their children were buried in that mud. Mud almost filled the classrooms. With shovels, if necessary, with bare hands, they pitted themselves against the uncounted tons of slimy filth, the waste product of coal mining. Perhaps their little sons and daughters might still be alive. The school lay in the direct path of the disintegrating man-made mountain. Faced with calamity, the South Wales miners volunteered help to a man. Then came the command, stop and listen. Someone had thought he heard the cry of a child. Too often the cries had only been in the imagination of the men who worked. At 7.30 that morning, a man on the tip warned that a slide might be imminent. An hour and a half later, the children went to school. If fate had stayed its hand a few more hours, those little children would not be dead. Perhaps a brother or a sister might yet be saved. Many times in these Welsh valleys, the price of coal has been paid in human life. Yet there has never been anything to compare with Abavan. Here, death struck above ground, 
giving the surface the semblance of a mine as the slurry mountain overwhelmed the school. This time, too, most of the dead were children, dying entombed, as men have died so often in the mine. The early dark of autumn came, and through the long hours they worked hard. Smoke rose from the slag heap, set burning by fires in the ruined houses. Many of the men worked around the clock while there was still hope that some of the buried children might be reached alive. These men would have gone on digging, even without lights. Some of them, perhaps, have dug in total darkness in rescue operations underground, urged by deep Welsh humanity and the sense of community common to miners everywhere. Here they were spurred even more. Their own children were still in peril if they breathed at all. Religious emotion is a great power in Wales. Was this a punishment unto the third and fourth generation? Illogical, perhaps. But in the face of agonizing disaster, the heart, not logic, is the guide. Fate surely should have spared the children. Next day, the people of Aberfan saw things more clearly. The shock and horror of the first impact had urged them to heroic efforts, but at the same time partly dulled their grief. It came back now. The full tragedy was evident on every side. Families of but a few hours ago did not exist, robbed of the children in whom they put so much hope, whom they had cherished. In the valleys of South Wales, calamities have punctuated the century of coal mining. Many a sudden explosion underground has sentenced whole villages to a lifetime's bereavement. Lord Snowden's Welsh sympathies were deeply stirred as he moved about the stricken village. Duke of Edinburgh, though inured to death and suffering in the war, was much moved. This is peace, and the welfare of children and youth have always been dear to his heart. He said he had seen nothing to compare with it. By this time, there could be little hope for most of those who were still missing. Suffer the little children. With new meaning, how those words haunted the senses now. Can it be that their sacrifice, their suffering had to be, to claim the attention of the whole country to the plight of miners and the mining industry? Perhaps in the light of this tragedy, we shall remember them. They must not be forgotten men. Their work goes on. Tragedy can halt, not stop it, at mines economically working. Before the war, old men remembered these valleys, green and lovely, the rolling hillsides unravaged and unscarred. Soon, men learnt that beauty and mining cannot live side by side. Having served Britain so well, the miners must not be left unemployed as in the pre-war slum. There must be help, not only for Aberfan, but all who toil to win coal. Well, the reason I've showed you it, guys, is because that's so, so important in our history as a country, because we're built on coal. Most of our industries needed coal. 
and this was one of the impacts of it on the on the humans that and the people that lived in that town mining for it. The ultimate cost, you know, these men were working 12-hour shifts in complete darkness underground, taking out all the rock to get to the coal seams and just dumping it at the surface. But that poor decision of dumping it too close to that school robbed them of their children. So it's still a village that has very few younger people because it's been scarred and tarnished by the reputation of that disaster. So if you go to Aberfan, there's actually a memorial cemetery for all the people that died. It's a really interesting place, a bit morbid, but it is a really interesting thing in our history. So it links to the types of mining. So on the worksheet, I want you to fill these in now, like where it says two types of mining. Okay, and then we're going to look at pillar and stall mining here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this little PowerPoint to explain the two types of mining. Now, the first kind of mining is called deep or underground mining. So you can just put that on the worksheet. An Aberfan mine in the village of Aberfan was a deep mine. The first photograph I showed you on the PowerPoint slide was an open class cast mine, and it's called a strip mine because they strip off the surface rocks, just like a quarry. Most metal mines, copper, things like that, are doing, done by strip mining in places like Brazil, Mexico, Australia, places like that. But because the UK doesn't have much space, we have to do deep underground mining. And there's not many mines left, not many coal mines left. They're, they're all about building a new one in Cumbria at the moment to get coal out of the ground again to power the steel industry. So if we take the first type of mining then, deep mining, this is part of the Welsh deep mines. All they use is something called a shearer. They used to do it by hand, but this shearing machine cuts the coal seam out and then a conveyor belt takes it to the surface. So you can see here, the shearer is cutting out of the coal face and then the coal is brought back to the surface in a set of mine shafts. And a really famous kind of mining is an old fashioned method of mining called pillar and stall mining. So what we're going to use is use this little photograph to draw in the worksheet. See so on the worksheet, you're going to draw out this kind of pillar and stall deep mining. So I'm going to use Active Inspire to draw you in because I've managed to get a little drawing tool now from the IT department so I can draw really easily. So what I want you to do in your worksheet is draw this that I'm now going to draw for you because I'm going to use this little bamboo tablet to sketch it out on. So we're underground here. This is These are pillars of rock holding the mine up. So in the box next to the box next to that, what you're going to draw is going to be this. So you've got a box like this. So imagine this is your box. You just draw out in that box. This is your box here. I'm going to draw out some pillar and stall mining. And what I need to, to show is the roof here. I'm going to show the roof of the mine being a bit uneven. I'm going to use a coloured pen to show that. So this is the roof of the mine here. And these are then some sort of sandstone rock above. So I'm going to show them in a minute sandstone. And you can see this is my sandstone symbol. So I'm just doing a little sketch here of pillar and stall. I'm then going to draw the floor of my mine. So I'm going to go back to my pencil. I'm going to draw the floor here. Again, I'm going to make that a little bit dark. I'm going to go for like a dark grey highlighter tool. So this is the floor of the mine. It's not this person in there, apologies. Smiley. 
And then what you're then going to have to show is some of the pillars. Okay, so do yourself a sketch of the pillars now. So the pillars look a bit like this, pillars of rock. So these pillars here support the mind. Pillars of solid rock. Okay, now I'm going to show <clears throat> the coal seam that they're actually trying to hack out. I'm going to show that in black here. So this is like underground, okay? So I'm going to get a coal seam in there. Nice dark black. This is all coal. You can't see it on that photo, but I'm just going to show it on my sketch. Just shade a couple of the pillars in. I can do this online with a little pen. You can do it in your in your worksheet or in your book if you haven't got the worksheet for whatever reason. We're just going to then put a couple of annotations on it. Okay, so I'm going to use a red pen here. So I'm going to call this the roof of the mine. My roof. I'm going to call this the floor of the mine. And I'm going to call these the pillars of the mine. And this thing is the thing they're trying to get to the coal seam. And then on the very top of this mine, I'm going to show the surface, okay? So like right up at the top of my diagram, you can imagine this is underground. It's obviously not drawn to scale. But this is going to be the surface. Grassy surface, yeah? And we're just drawing out a little diagram to show how this works. So this is the surface. Now the miners would come in by a lift shaft. So they put a mine shaft in. So they'd come in here through like a mine shaft basically from the surface. And they have to have like winch gear. Now, some mines can be as deep as 700 meters, something like that, up to a kilometer in places. So, you might have like a winch with a wheel head here at the surface. Okay, famous in mine areas. So you'd have like a lift shaft. The miners come down in that lift shaft. Okay, so I'm just going to label that one as well. So, this is my wheel head. Head. This is my lift. And then this thing is the actual the mine shaft that gets them into the mine. Shaft. Okay. So the reason it's called pillar and stall mining is they cut out all of the rock around these pillars and leave the pillars in to prop up the roof of the mine and then they have to stall for a bit until then they get the next pillar cut out and they've been working the coal seam like that so this is called pillar and stall Has anyone got any ideas why this might be the most dangerous form of mining well, the pillars that you excavate, they could collapse under the weight. They yeah. could not be strong enough when you excavate more, so the roof could collapse again. Absolutely. So this roof here, above the pillars that I've labelled, you're exactly right, Wesley, this can just collapse in. 
and even the pillars can start to crack and crumble and collapse in. So it's properly dangerous. Now the problem is if you're and if there was some sort yeah. of emergency, yeah. because you'd probably be like crawling, you wouldn't yeah. be able to get out easily. You're never going to get out of that and thing, are you? There could be gas builds up, build ups. Ah, uh, like that gas as well. So basically, the miners are probably crawling in like this in this direction on this photograph to get into this mine because. They're probably looking into the mine. They're probably not what when they took this photo. They're probably not wanting to go right in. You're probably like crawling in to get in in the first place. So if you get down to here at part X, say, and then this roof collapses, imagine here where you're at like X on my photograph there, trying well into the mine. You've come all the way down the lift shaft. You've crawled into the mine in this direction. Imagine this bit of the roof collapses between the pillars. This all drops in on you. And blocks the mine you're stuck all right and the problem with this mining technique is it can be the depth of this thing could be up to one kilometer deep all right how do you get people back out one kilometer deep now what they have to do in that chinese example i showed you right at the start of the lesson they started to just drill a new access tunnel all the way down Unbelievable, but in seven days, they managed to drill right down to 700 meters to get these people out. Yeah, crazy. So some of the miners in the world are the toughest people. And the reason that I'm interested in it is my grandfather was a miner in County Durham in northeast England. And he had to do this. He had to go into mines and cut out coal with bare hands, pretty much like with pickaxes. Back in the old day, he, he would have been over a hundred now if he'd lived. But he remembers that, and I remember the stories of mining. So it's interesting to me. So what happens in a mine like that is the pillars often are made of wood or rock, and they, with the overburden pressure, you can add this now to your diagram. The overburden, like Wesley says, will cause collapse. So good answer, Wesley. So just add this to your diagram that like you're sketching now. Sometimes they put wooden pillars in or the rock pillars collapse because the overburden pressure, it's what we call the overburdens, the rocks above collapse the pillars. And it's those rock pillars here which would collapse. So if you're on your diagram, just draw yourself some pressure. And we're just going to call that overburden pressure. Okay, so it's called over burden pressure. Okay, so that's the overburden. The overburden is trying to make the roof collapse. Okay, so we're just showing it on that diagram. That's the overburden. And then the coal seam, put it on the opposite side of this diagram. That's the thing they're trying to get to. Okay, now when we go back to the worksheet, You've then got that little sketch in there. You're then going to use this diagram and your own words to explain the problems associated with the pillar and stall mining. OK, so we're just going to write the problems in here. What problems happen with pillar and stall? Well, it's really straightforward. It's collapse. Pillar and stall mining. You're going to get collapse. And the reason being broken pillars Will, will crumple and collapse and at the surface you get what's called subsidence okay so in that little box here in your worksheet talk about miners getting trapped in the mine because the mine can collapse but also at the surface if you've got a house and the mine collapses you make what's called subsidence at the surface the ground sinks in it's like a sinkhole there's one of these opened up in the floods last week in Manchester and took a whole front of a house out. This happens a lot in mining areas. OK. Then it's asking you for question four. What are features A and B showing you? Well, A is the roof and B is, sorry, B is the roof and A is a pillar. So just to explain the problems of pillar and stall. Broken pillars lead to subsidence at the surface, but also trapping miners in the mine. The mine entrance is here. Sometimes you get a shallow mine where you can walk into it from the surface. Sometimes it's a deep mine. But if the pillars collapse, it causes houses to be damaged and subsidence or subsidence at the surface. 
going back onto our photo on the worksheet, A is a pillar, B is the roof. So here, what are the features showing? Well, A, pillar, B, roof. We've explained the problems, problems to do with broken pillars causing subsidence. Now there's another type of mining that I wanted to then know about, which is called long wall retreat mining. And I'm going to get you to make notes on its three stages in long wall retreat. OK, so once we're happy with pillar and stall, and you just said that the roof can collapse, trapping miners to the problems and you get subsidence at the surface. Then you've labeled B is the roof, A is the pillar. We're then going to try in this box, draw a diagram of what's called long wall retreat method. OK, a long wall retreat is where we're going to kind of get up to today. So what they do in long wall retreat is they drill down into the ground and set up two big long walls at 90 degrees to the coal seam. And that's how they mine a long wall mine. So what, we, what we're going to do, we're just going to very quickly now sketch out a long wall retreat mine in plan view. So we're just going to call it long wall retreat And then you're going to draw the coal seam. So that's the coal seam. It's just looking down on it in like bird's eye view. So that's the coal seam. So this is like a plan view on bird's eye view. What's called a plan view, looking down, not in cross sections. It's as you look as a bird would look down on it from the sky. You set up therefore two access tunnels parallel to the coal seam. Okay, so these are the two access tunnels. And they make a right angle with the coal seam. So if that's the coal seam that you're mining, the access tunnels are grilled into that coal seam. Okay, and then this thing here, this big long wall of coal here, is called the long wall. Okay, and these are the access tunnels. Want to take the coal out and want the miners to come in. So these are access. Tunnels. I'll do that on this slide today. So there's the access tunnels. And what you have working the long wall is a machine here which cuts the coal. And that machine that cuts the coal goes up and down on a rail and parallel to the long wall and it's going to cut all the coal off here. It's got like a cutting disc there. We call that a shearer because it's shearing off the coal. So a shearer cuts the coal. Okay, so our stages on your worksheet is going to be basically stage one, set up two access tunnels. At 90 degrees. To. The scene. Stage two. Is a shearer. Cuts the coal. On the long wall what's called the long wall. And stage three, coal is removed. By a conveyor belt. Through the access tunnel. So literally, people come in this way, so people come in there. People in air, basically. So people coming in there, and you'll have like conveyor belt coming out this way, taking the coal out. So that's going to be like a coal conveyor. 
and all this is happening deep underground. So that's like looking down on the mind. And that's called long wall retreat method. So we call that long wall retreat or just long wall, long wall retreat method of mining. So now you know two types of mining. Now you know pillar and stall method and you know long wall retreat method. Right? When people come out of this long wall mine, they dig these access tunnels in, but they work back out of the mine this way. So they've already taken all this coal down here. So the roof here collapses. So the roof's allowed to collapse here. Right, it collapses behind the miners and they work their way out. So out of the two types, which one do you think is the most safe? Long wall. Why, Emily? You're right. Because um there's um i think is it like a machine that's cutting the coal yeah that machine's cutting the coal so that's a bit safer isn't it yeah so there isn't as many people having to go down yeah it's more efficient and yeah. you're not getting as much waste for like your coal yeah. things yeah and the, i think the other thing as well as what you're doing is see there because you put the access tunnels in like that and you're taking all this coal out, letting this area collapse, and you're working back out of the mine. If this roof collapses, it's not going to kill anyone. Where in our previous method, I'm going to show you this one that we just drew. I'm a bit slow. But for our pillar and stall method, remember we said we work our way, we work our way into the mine. So that one, you go deeper and deeper and deeper, you're going to get trapped. So that's dangerous. Long wall retreat, you work your way out of the mine. So if the roof does collapse, you're probably not going to get trapped. So that's pretty cool now, you know the difference. And that's the end of the lesson, guys, the two different types of mining. We're going to finish mining off next lesson. All right. So I've recorded that if you didn't quite get it. Wait, so, sir, if yeah. someone was to do diamond mining, is this the yeah. same type that they'd yeah. use for coal as the diamond ore? Do they have to have a This would one? be, um, you, you wouldn't do long wall retreat because diamonds wouldn't have a big long wall there wouldn't be that many but you'd have, you would actually do similar to long wall retreat you'd have probably two access tunnels but then you'd have to probably work a lot of it with a grinder to try and grind up the rock to see if there's any diamond in but it oh. wouldn't, be shearing, wouldn't be shearing the coal off it'd be very similar to this but there wouldn't be like low you know that wouldn't all be diamond there wesley it'd be nice if it was oh, that, okay. would just be, sure, that would be rock they'd end up just carving through that rock and any little loose diamonds that they then find then they'd take out so it's much more difficult to do diamond mining because there's much less diamond in the earth. Coal mining is ricking all this coal seam out. Cheers, sir. And are no both of these deep mining? These are both deep mining, long wall retreat and pillar yeah. stall, very deep. We're going to do surface mining next lesson. All right. We'll get to it okay, sir. Box. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Bye.